Live from Austin, Texas, at the tech gathering of the year. They call it Spring Break for Geeks. Rackspace, the open cloud company, presents the Scobalizer with the movers, the doers, shaking things up and impacting our world. Now, Robert Scoble, the open cloud experience. Hey, what's up, peoples? Welcome to the Rackspace Open Cloud Experience at South by Southwest. We're continuing to meet really interesting people, bringing them in off the street and uh, having a fun chat. And this one is really a, a special one because uh, Subway was started by a teenager and now is, I think, one of the biggest restaurants in the world. And it's an inspirational story for us at Rackspace. We love startups and we love hearing stories of entrepreneurship that, that comes out of unexpected places. Anyways, we're going to talk about their marketing campaign, which is also interesting to me because I'm in the marketing department at Rackspace, so I'm always studying innovative marketers. Who are you? Uh, I'm Jennifer Cushell. I own Young and Successful Media, and we specialize in the next generation global workforce, so the billion young people who are entering work. And we build really cool campaigns for companies like Subway that are trying to make an impact on them. Yeah. So when we found out that Subway started by started by a 17 year old. We decided to do a big story about it. We did a documentary, and we've built a massive uh, online media campaign. So, so uh, tell me about the campaign, and where would we experience it? I well, guess. you can experience it online. So, it, first and foremost, we have a game called the Build Your Own Virtual Subway Game, which we're hosted on Rackspace. Oh, you were my cool. first call. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know because you've been serving, young, uh, you know, our YSN site for a long time. But uh, I knew I needed a, a, a serving company that was really scalable because we are having players in a hundred countries. So I had no idea what to expect, and I didn't trust any, you know, individuals with that. So I called you guys, and you've been amazing. But we we basically built a business simulation game that um, students all over the world can play to learn about business and entrepreneurship and franchising, and hopefully some of them decide to pursue careers in it. And as a part of the project, Subway's going to offer a job or opportunity to one person in each of the hundred countries that they operate in. Wow. It's and huge. Subway, you know, I, I went to San Jose State, which started a Subway competitor called Togo's, and that's oh, a yeah. pretty significant this company. How did, how did Subway start again? Because well, you know the owner. Yeah, you know Fred's the, the a good kid. friend of mine now. He was 17 when he started with a $1,000 loan. A next door, a neighbor said, um, you know, he wanted money to go to medical school. And if you notice, every napkin of Subway says doctor's associates. It's actually because he started Subway to, to, uh, to get money to go to med school. So his, his friend said, I'll give you $1,000 if you want to start a sub shop. The people who own the local ones are always wearing jewelry and they look really wealthy. And with no experience, they started when he was 17. And yeah. you know, he got up to about 16 stores and then started franchising and then took off. And now they're at 38,800 units. They're the biggest restaurant chain in the world. There's only one other franchise that's bigger, and that's 7-Eleven. And th so they've surpassed McDonald's. They're in 100 countries. It's an extraordinary story, and so few people realize how they started. No, it's, uh, I didn't realize it. I, I eat yeah. there all the time. Um, so what's the challenge of trying to build a global brand like that and trying to take a campaign to countries that don't speak English, don't yeah. have the same culture? Um, tell me about some of your challenges. Well, I mean, on the subway side, I, you know, part of what we covered in the documentary was how you take a global brand like this and, and, and grow it. I mean, going into country, different countries, especially like Asian countries, with a sandwich where they eat rice, they don't eat bread. There's a whole cultural uh, shift that needs to happen. And so we learned about a lot of cool things that they do, like they, in China, they'll bake cookies and leave the doors open and they'll lure people with the cookie smell and give them a free cookie for a sandwich. So that was interesting. But online, to engage young people in 100 countries, that's a whole other challenge. So we've got to really make sure that when we're writing um, uh, the content, whether it's the blogs, whether it's the, um, the email messaging, we, if we text message, that we're really speaking to an audience that doesn't all speak English as their first native language, that we're using universally impactful concepts that get them emotionally engaged. And something like the idea of him starting at 17 really resonates with kids all over the world. No, that's really cool. Um, how, how is the media landscape? I mean, here at South by Southwest, I've been coming here for more than 10 years. When I started coming here, there was only 500 people. Now there's 200,000. Yeah. There wasn't a Twitter. There wasn't a YouTube. Yep. There wasn't a Facebook. There wasn't a Foursquare. Four there wasn't a, a Google Plus. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't a LinkedIn, right? So I, 
obviously our world has shifted in 10 years, but what does that mean to you and, and where do you see the next shifts coming? Well, I mean, to me, I started in 1993. So we had a Fox Pro based system, you know, and we did, you know, a CRM solution and sent it out on physical disks all over the world. That's how we started our network. We, we had a BBC on in 94, you know, with 10,000 people. So, I mean, we've gone through the whole technology adoption phase and even being in it, it's still very hard to keep up. You have to decide as a marketer, is it worth doing a Pinterest, you know, whole section? How much do you leverage Twitter versus Facebook? And then also, you know, what kind of responsiveness are you going to get? Even in building a game, we built a really sophisticated game, but we didn't have the user engagement built into it. So we had to build a, a Subway Global Challenge Facebook page. Where do you think things are going now? And, and where, where is it? What, what, what role is this campaign and what, what are you doing now? Yeah, I mean, you know, one thing that's been interesting is to see where, where you get the responsiveness online. Um, you know, email, we had a 22 year old who said they never use email to communicate. I have no idea how that's working. I, I know. So we're, we're investigating no, I, I that. See my, well, I see it with my kids. Uh, you know, I, I met the founder of GroupMe last night, and yeah. we were using GroupMe, not email, to find where all the parties are last night. Oh, yeah, right? and Foursquare to figure out, or Eventbrite. I mean, that's how you apparently figure out your way around and my, South by. My teenager, my, I have a 19-year-old, yeah. he rarely uses email. Mm -hmm. You know, only to talk to old farts like me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly he's using texting or yeah. a little bit of Facebook or group, uh, group te mm -hmm. text services like yeah. GroupMe, right? Well, we're looking at texting a lot, especially on the global side. There are some companies um, that are doing an amazing job of getting into emerging markets. And the funny thing with emerging markets is they might not actually have the opportunity to get a Wi-Fi access or have computers, but now they're getting cell phones. So they're going right to smartphones very quickly. So it, it, it's, it's been an interesting challenge to hit people, especially in the more distant lands. But that's, you know, that's the next frontier. There are a billion young people entering the workforce, and we need to look at the much bigger global picture. Yeah. So for me, I mean, the subway campaign is really important, but what I want to parlay this into is another global network of young leaders and then build the first global opportunity marketplace. I want young people to be able to shop the world for opportunity the way they do for vacation. Wow. And I don't think there's an, a lack of talent in the world, and I don't think there's a lack of opportunity. It's just a, an efficient system to distribute it all. So are you going to build the next LinkedIn? I, I hope <laughs> place, so. <laughs> place where we're going to come and uh, be able to find people around the world who have talent to do different things? Yeah, I want to take it beyond where where LinkedIn is too. I um, I think I want it. I want it to be more of an experience. Young people are doing so many cool things with their lives, and they have video, and they have photography, and they have all these beautiful assets to describe who they are. But they can't describe it properly in a resume or in a very simple online profile. So I think we need to think more like Jet Setter with beautiful imagery and, and something that they can share. But I want to be the place that they go to describe who they are and what makes them special, and then have the global you know employers of the world and the franchise companies and the entrepreneurs come find them that way. Tell me what's happened since launching this camp, because it's been uh, launched, uh, what, a month or two yeah, now? Yeah, we launched in January. What's happened? Uh, you know, how, how many hits are you getting? Or what, well, it's what, been interesting. I mean, we, we've just started to get support from Subway, so they have 20 million fans on their Facebook page, and that's been exciting. We get a nice response from that. Um, we're starting to learn a lot about um, young people who are working in the chain, for example, who want to be owners. So we're, look, we're working with the development group to say, you know, maybe we should create a fast track program for people who are 17, 19 years old and, and really want to be an owner at 18, 20, 25. That's possible. Um, we're also doing a lot of work now with the Franchise Association because the franchise industry is saying, wait a minute, we've never done a global marketing campaign of this scale. Subway's a great case study. Let's use others. Yeah. So they're asking me to come in and potentially start highlighting the stories of the big, big franchise companies like the Hiltons and the Marriott's and a lot of the other ones that we're actually started by very young people or small families and have grown into major chains. Yeah. So I think we really have a nice foundation to do some massive global education, build some engagement, and also you know drive uh, drive a lot of brand awareness for these companies. No, it's really exciting. I, you know, I talked to Nick Woodman at GoPro, and he yeah. really uh, thinks about building a global brand. And he really thinks about uh, shifting the belief of yeah. what his product is. He's really trying mm -hmm. to get away from sports and show it. Yeah. show his product being used in other contexts mm -hmm. to get people to believe that it's uh, not just a sports camera, it's yeah. a lifestyle camera, yeah. right? How, how do you do that? And what advice may, might you have for startups who are trying to build global brands, yeah. who are trying to be the Foursquare or the Twitter or the Facebook? 
you know, because there's lots of them yeah. around here, right? I you mean, see I, them out in the street. They're all trying to get attention yeah. and get their message heard. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, the engagement factor. Why are people going to fall in love with you? And and under building your company more around a lifestyle concept, or at least understanding the lifestyle of your user, engaging with them, connecting with what emotionally matters to them. I don't care if you're a server company. I mean, I've never cared about server companies, but I love Rackspace, and I've turned into a massive raving fan, and I'll sit on technology calls for a long time just because I love talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. But it's it's that kind of engagement. People have to love you. They have to love the mission. They have to believe that you authentically care about them. And if you can convey that and do that with many multimedia you know, formats and channels, I think you have a really good shot. But you need evangelists out there. Yeah. And you need to really grow them authentically, and it takes time. Yeah. You can't do it overnight. Now, what would your advice be? I, you know, I have I have specific advice for people who think they're going to launch at South by Southwest. Oh but yeah. What what if you were working with a startup, you know, on the street here? What what would you recommend that they do at next year's South by Southwest? Well, I'd say you know one, do a lot of research before to figure out who's going to be here, so you know who you're talking to. Yeah. But the other thing is, don't be so narrowly focused on the one person who can close a deal with you. Think about the gatekeepers. Think about the connectors. There are people like you and I who know millions of people, and you can connect with tons of people in all different industries but I think sometimes people are so laser focused on the one person they need to execute their deal that they completely miss lots of other valuable people around them yeah. and also a lot of the gatekeepers are watching yeah. to see who's paying attention and who's cool and who's interesting and no, I, I you know true. don't think transactionally this is not about a transaction this is about relationships here yeah and it is there is an opportunity cost on the street you know oh, and yeah. you feel it right if you spend uh, more than 20 minutes at, at one party or with one person oh, yeah. you're like wait a second there's somebody the elon musk just walked by i saw that at a party last yeah. night. i was like you know i want to go talk to him well, and I so there's real opportunity cost but also adding value yeah I, I really believe in add value wherever you can don't it's not a zero-sum game it's not one person wins one person loses if you can connect someone if you can introduce great people if you can just make a party more exciting by having a great personality do it yeah. add value and it'll come back to you no that's absolutely true good, good yeah. advice um, where else do we take this? Because you're doing an interesting work. I mean, you're one of the elite who are who are trying to build a, a global brand and Thank build you. and are doing it for a global company uh, at a at a scale that very few people play. Yeah. Um, but that's also why we do it. Yeah. I mean, I've been a solo entrepreneur for many years. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 19 years old. I'm now 20 years into it. Yeah. But it's it's. I know how hard it is to build a company from scratch. Yeah. And I mean, we went through and we raised $5 million on our last round and we had a $20 million valuation and we were about to be bought by big media companies before the whole market crashed. But I mean, I know what it's like to build from scratch. You have to align yourself with good partners. And for us, you know, doing campaigns for big companies has enabled us to get that platform, yeah. to get that global reach. I mean. How many companies have a 5 million person opt-in list no. or 20 million Facebook fans or, re or reach or physical locations in 100 countries? So, I mean, it takes a long time to build up the credibility and the trust with a brand like that to let you come in and build a campaign like this. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I think the diligence, working hard all these years, it's paying off for the brand, it's paying off for us. It's a beautiful relationship. Tell me a little bit more about your company. How many people do you oh, have? Oh, yeah. We have about a dozen people, but we're almost all virtual now. We were very physical. We had, you know, million dollar overhead, which was really scary when you're an entrepreneur. Yeah. <laughs> you, know? you have 19 year olds who are watching Anna Nicole Smith online when you're supposed to be working. But um, but yeah, so we're very virtual right now. And I've had to have virtual teams because I think I need that intelligence from around the world. Yeah. So I like having developers in Australia. I like having people in London. And, and we're actually about to start building out like a mini UN. I'm going to build out youth ambassadors in 100 countries right now. Wow. And I think, you know, also from a credibility standpoint and from an insight standpoint, whether it's what technology to use, what platforms to leverage, how to message things, what languages to start to translate into. I think that'll make a huge difference. One of the one of the trends here at South by Southwest that I've keyed in on, because there hasn't been a big company launch. You know, uh, 2007 was the Twitter, yeah. the Twitter South by, and 2009 was the Foursquare South mm. by, and 2011, 2011 was the Group Me yeah. South by, and last year was the Highlight South by. I haven't sensed a company really taking over this year. I, I haven't seen a cool new app, but I have seen a whole range of productivity apps. I, uh, yes. Mailbox got mm -hmm. hot a, a month ago. Yeah. Tempo from uh, SRI, uh, Sunrise, and um, 
Oh, I know, I'm forgetting like 16 of them. Oh, uh, yeah. ma uh, you know, uh, Sanebox, mm -hmm. Other Inbox, mm -hmm. who's a startup here in Austin, yeah. and um, uh, Maelstrom. There's a whole yeah. lot of apps that help you. Um, your productivity, your efficiency. Yeah, so how yeah do, I mean, that's. How do you, how do you be more productive? How do you be Oh, more my productive? God. <laughs> I, I need to clone myself. I work like 24 7. That's that's what you have to do, you know? So I tell mean, me what the tools are that you are on your phone or. Oh, my or, God. Or I mean, Dropbox, I'm using like crazy, obviously. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping in touch with people. Uh, Facebook, I'm using their ads manager constantly. I like testing little ads with it, $5 little yeah. chunks, and I see what converts. And I love that. I can do that on my phone. I like seeing the reach. Like I didn't realize we weren't doing very much marketing in Latin America, but half of our people are coming in from Latin America. I wouldn't have known that if I didn't have certain insights. Um, I'm using Hootsuite a lot because I like how you can broadcast to all the different channels. Um, cloud has helped us figure out who we need to connect with in this space to help us broadcast. That's been really helpful. Um, I take a zillion photos. I have a huge problem. I have 10,000 photos on my phone, so I'm constantly crashing my iPhone. Mm -hmm. I need help with that. Yep. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, but you know, I'm trying. I'm always trying different things. I use Yelp every second because I'm. I'm really now. I'm done with. Um, eating hotel food, so I try to eat decent places. And also, I've learned to, um, when I land in a city like Austin, if you plant yourself at a cool place, people will come to you instead of you having to run all over town. I do that in New York a lot, too. Yeah. So I use Jet Setter constantly to find a really neat location. I had like a dozen journalists come out to meet Fred, the founder of Subway, last week. I planned it in two days. I got this gorgeous hotel for like dirt cheap. And, um, and we found this fabulous place, so I had this whole media event, basically, in 48 hours because I used a couple of these online tools and all day long, of course, I'm using apps to coordinate everyone. You know, I, I love studying people like you because <laughs> that's where I get uh, you know, my productivity up because this is a real problem. How do you scale yourself? How do you, oh, yeah. how do, you do more with less? Or, you know, and, and you're trying to really build a global company and a global brand yeah. and you and you got to do that while walking around and drinking at South it's great. <laughs> I know, I know. You know, you need like batch uploader, you know, iLoader I use to upload all the photos. Like I can't keep track of everything fast enough and I feel like I need three different devices at every time, every minute. I need the iPad, the iPhone and the I'm the the airbook. I'm switching to Android, actually. I have an Android phone in my pocket, and I'm going to get the Google Glass. Are you going to get the Google Glass? I don't know. I don't uh, know. I bet you will. I've been, I've been diehard <laughs> Apple for my whole life, uh, but I, the glasses are interesting. I'm uh, I'm curious. I bet you will, because you're one of those people that wants, <laughs> wants the to ADD see. You want to see all your employees <laughs> talking to you all day long and not have to look at the phone. But you know what's really funny, actually? I, I do a lot of speaking to big corporations that are trying yeah. to understand millennials, and one of the funniest conversations we always have is, why do they need to have their headphones on while they're working? or why are they looking at television or they want three screens they can't possibly focus and I have to explain to them you know this next generation we're using I mean we and they they're using five forms of media at yeah. any time and it's very hard for people to understand how we're all processing so many things you know simultaneously they think we're not productive but at the same time I don't know how we'd actually do the things that we do if we weren't multitasking you know I, I'm multitasking I see a stream and <laughs> notifications yeah. coming in on my phone you're getting feedback right? on the show and what people are hearing yeah. and seeing in fact, and in fact Eric Bowles just said the audio is all fixed so thanks Rocky thank you Rocky. you know <laughs> 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 and that's how that's how the world is right? Oh, yeah. the world is just going and you get to you get to dive in oh yeah and we'll take a photo I'll post I'll send it to my uh, my social media person she'll pop it on the subway global site and then it'll go out to people all over the world and I, I just love how instantly within seconds we're connected I'll have emails back from Egypt and from Sri Lanka and Pakistan within 10 minutes of posting anything yeah. how cool is that how cool is that you know <laughs> <laughs> I love this world you know I, I, I love this world I was what uh, I, you know, I was watching the TED videos because I had the live stream. I was watching it on my iPhone while driving around Silicon Valley, yeah. listening to it on my car stereo. I'm like, this is awesome. a mind-blowing world. I remember That's when awesome. it was so hard to get a little, <laughs> a little, uh, oh, yeah. you know, three frames a second on See You See Me over the internet. Oh, yeah. you know? Well, also, I mean, think about conferences too. Even if yeah. you can't be at South by. You can be following the tweet streams. You can be following, you know, the videos. You can you can really engage. I go and get my hair done. And I sit in the the shampoo bowl, like watching conferences online. You know, so I feel like you can engage. I'm going to Brazil in a week to the Global Entrepreneur Congress, and all of my connecting in and figuring out who's there has all been online. It's all been through apps. You know, I'm messaging all the speakers through every different form that I can get to them at. But it's like you know, you're constantly on the go, constantly moving, constantly connected, and you can reach a global audience so easily now. Who are your mentors? 
Wow. Um, actually, the editor of Entrepreneur Magazine for years, Reva Lazonsky, was one of my top. She's at Reva on, on Facebook. Um, John Katzman, who founded Princeton Review, was one of the top ones for me. Um, uh, I've learned a lot from uh, Brian Clark and, and um, Chris Brogan over the years, uh, Scott Stratton. Yeah, I followed I think I, pretty closely. I'm going to go party with Brogan tonight. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got some if of the I other can guys. Get close yeah. to him. <laughs> I know. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, I think this afternoon is announcing a secret wine party. He's done this several times, and within an hour, he has 1,600 people waiting in it's line. Amazing. It's just amazing how fast. And good wine. A good wine. You know, <laughs> a good and, wine. And it's just amazing yeah. how fast things move. Oh yeah. Like the good parties, uh, the first thing they say is no twittering, no four squaring, oh, no bloody, no highlighting, no photos especially. No, well, <laughs> no. photos, uh, you know, uh, just keep them quiet keep them, for a while yeah. because it puts a social pressure on having yeah. a small, uh, you know, intimate dinner. Yeah. You know, it's really, uh, it's you know really crazy. Else, you know who else does really cool engagement? Scott Monty from Ford. Yeah. I really like him. Um, yeah. He does some brilliant campaigns using yeah. a giant brand. I drove a Ford down to CES because I, I saw know. that. Yeah. You were at the New Media Expo yeah. talking about that. That was good. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> conference, and the CES is always fun. And, and Ford, yeah. Ford really is changing its. I'm changing my Completely. belief of what Ford is just because it's Scott. Oh, yeah. And if he wasn't there, you know, I would still think it's a slow-moving yeah. American car company. Well, speaking of, uh, American Airlines is here. Yeah. You know, that's a company that traditionally hasn't been very savvy with, with social media. But I know Jason over there, I mean, he's really digging into understanding who small business customers are, investing in the next best customer for them. And it's interesting to see that, you know, they're really getting here. And I think they're getting a lot of social credibility by showing up. You know, over the years, American Air, I mean, um, American Express has done a brilliant job with their open initiatives yeah. of really digging into the small business space. A lot of credit card companies say they're doing it, but they're there. They're yeah. always there. They're authentic. Yeah. And I think that's what people are looking for. And so even if you are an app company or whatever you're doing here, I think looking for those partnership opportunities, looking to add value, not just what you can get out of it, is going to make a huge difference and gives you an opportunity to play with some really interesting people. Well, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> just bring the party here. We'll awesome. just have a fun, yeah. fun time. Uh, where do I learn more about your company? And Thank you. you. It's uh, our site is YSN.com and uh, YSN. your success network. And yeah. then we on the subway site is uh, YSN forward slash subway. Very cool. So and you're on Twitter. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. YSN Jen. YSN Jen. YSN Jen and J E N. Okay. And then we have uh, the Facebook page, which is the Subway Global Challenge. Cool. And we're posting up videos of Fred. You can talk to the owner. You can talk to head of global development. You can tell us where you're building your stores. And you know, I'm hoping a lot of people go on. We are build a virtual Subway store, and we're really going to give jobs and opportunities to people in 100 countries. So anyone who comes out to support it is really supporting people globally. Well, thank you. You have an inspiring story. Fred has an inspiring thank story, you. and uh, I, I really had a fun <laughs> it's time. So nice so seeing thank you. you. Thanks for coming out. Thanks, Robert. When Rackspace's live coverage from Austin continues, we'll show you the future in real time. Rackspace, backed by fanatical support, bringing you live coverage from South by Southwest daily. Hmm, so good, it hurts. The Open Cloud Experience.